welcome to Tuesday Night Live, the big gig right around Australia. We're going live and great to have you along. We've got a very big, vibey crowd here tonight. I should uh, introduce myself. My name is Wendy. Have we got any... <laughs> yes, uh, they're on drugs. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> no, my name is uh, Wendy. Have we got anyone else named Wendy in tonight? No, of course not, because it's a shockingly daggy name. You never own up to being named Wendy. You never hear of Princess Wendy or Dame Wendy. It's always Casper the drippy little ghost sidekick or Peter Pan's fag hag. I mean, Wendy's always the one who says, Oh, can I come too? No, Wendy, you better stay here and mind the picnic basket. <laughs> and we'll get Timmy the dog to protect you. What else can I tell you? I'm, um, uh, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good. There's someone trying to heckle me and I'm not going to pay attention. Um, no, I'm single. I'm single at the moment as well. I mean, I was going out with this guy for about five years. He was great. The trouble is everybody agreed with me. <laughs> I mean, I'd be at a restaurant discussing my sex life. I look up the whole place just going, I know, I know. <laughs> so the other thing I should tell you is that I'm uh, over 30 and proud. Yeah. Huh? yeah. is over 30 besides this woman down here. Is it? All right, okay, we're feeling good, we're feeling good. Okay, hands up those who are under 25. Let's see the under... Oh, look at them, look at them. Go. Look at me, look at me. I'm under 25. Let me just tell you something, you under 25-year-olds. You don't know anything. <laughs> You see, you don't have a clue. I'm finding it increasingly difficult to relate to people under 25. You see, I was brought up on Adventure Island, made in this very studio, right? <laughs> Adventure Island, what a great show. How am I expected to relate to youth programs like blah, blah, blah? I mean, have you seen that shit? I mean, <laughs> g'day, kids. Today we're going to have a look into the wide, wide, wonderful world of transvestites. Come on! We didn't have deviants on Adventure Island, did we, kids? <laughs> no. We had Mrs. Flowerpots, a 42 year old man with a rhododendron on his head. <laughs> Clown John Michael Housen wearing hair and pants. <laughs> Misomania and festive fumbles, two ageing queens renovating a castle with drainage problems. <laughs> you see, this is where you get into trouble. When you start talking about in my day, you know you're really over the hill. Because my father used to really annoy me. He'd always say, you know, in my day, young when you could go on a ride in a tram for tuppence. You could buy a house for ten bob. You could get killed in the war for a fiver. And I wonder what I'm going to be saying to my kids when I'm an old lady. You know, I tell you what, kids were used to, oh, stick half a gram of speed up our noses, <laughs> drink tequila slammers and listen to ACDC till we bled from the ears. <laughs> you kids don't know how to enjoy yourselves anymore. I think the only thing it does worry me about being over 30 is that I'm now in the target market for Octa magazine. <laughs> Did anybody see that magazine? Did you see the photo of Ita on the front page? Please, Ita. No wrinkles at all, please. Who's kidding who here, you know? I know that a lot of mature women like to have Vaseline put on the lens before they have the photo taken. I think they put the Vaseline on Ita and shot it from New Zealand. <laughs> can think they're like is a number 35 Derwent. <laughs> so that's how they did it, I just realised. Now you see, I'm not going to pay five bucks for a magazine that tells me how to pick up a successful businessman with his own car. All you've got to do is ring dial a pizza. Come on, let's face it. I would like to bring out my own magazine called Wendy for the woman who didn't get out of bed yesterday. <laughs> getting old you know I can I can tell I'm getting old I wonder whether it creeps up on you gradually or just one morning you wake up with this overwhelming urge to buy an album of Tony Barber inspirational songs <laughs> I started to think of Ray Martin as a sponge <laughs> I'm here already looking at Crippleen as a very decent sort of a fan <laughs> and the other thing 
thing, I think this is a sure worry. I am starting to think that John Howard is a sort of young, vibrant leader this country really needs. <laughs> I'm in big trouble, I think. Uh, uh, look, that's about enough from me now. We've got a big show to kick on here. I'd like to introduce you to a band who are really a Tuesday Night Live discovery. And this is their first time on telly. And uh, these are the guys who put the sax into saxophone. That's for our Kiwi viewers. Make them very, very welcome, the fabulous Swinging Sidewalks. <laughs> Good evening. We interrupt this program to bring you a news update. An investigation into the recent crash landing of a 737 Airbus has revealed that the aircraft's engines were bolted on backwards. <laughs> we're all terribly embarrassed, one executive. The incident was all the fault of Alan, who recently transferred to the workshop from the patio furniture department. <laughs> However, he's a bright lad and we're sure he'll get the hang of the job before hundreds of people are horribly incinerated. <laughs> Incidentally, there's some rather good viewing on the commercial channels at this very moment. On Seven, there's a repeat of one of my favourite episodes of ALF, in which the lovable alien furball attracts the attentions of an amorous Labrador. With hilarious results. On Nine, there's everybody's favourite, The Bill Cosby Show. Share the fun as Bill tells the family he's going to have to let the kids go for tax purposes. <laughs> On 10, you'll be in fits as a wacky gang from Porky's 4, each receive a six-month jail sentence for indecent exposure and sexual assault. That's two whole hours of film with the IQ of a lasagna. <laughs> or you can watch some more of this. guest on the big gig is Glyn Nicholas. Glyn, for those who subscribe to Cleo magazine, Glyn is actually listed as one of this month's 50 most eligible bachelors. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ridiculous. I've always been able to read his handwriting. But one of the things that Glyn describes himself as being in his early 30s, I think that qualifies for him to be uh, prosecuted under the Trade Practices Act. See what you think, Glyn Nicholas.
Thanks very much. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, so Wendy and I get along very well. She's an old friend of mine. Um, well, as Wendy said, my name's Glyn. Uh, I'm from Adelaide, and I'm one of Australia's most respected and highly paid comedians. <laughs> no, 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 crap, crap, crap. I actually live in Sydney. Um, I, I, only, I only used to live in Adelaide. Uh, actually, in Adelaide, I live very near the Grand Prix circuit, and people used to ask me if that was a bother. I just tell them, no, not at all. <laughs> You know, I wasn't always, I wasn't always this rich. I started off busking many years ago. You might not know, I started off busking in Munich, West Germany. And uh, very interesting time when I went there because the Germans are, are really fantastic people. I started off, you know, as the one-man band and uh, but after a while he got a bit heavy. So I got rid of him. <laughs> I remember Munich very clear. I was walking down the street and I saw this crowd of about 300 people surrounding this little English guy and he was playing the banjo and keeping these Germans happy and laughing, which is some feet. <laughs> Who says the Germans don't have a sense of humour? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> but I'd tell you one thing about the Germans, well, they will not mess around. If you're no good busking, they'll just sort of look at you weird and pass you by, like this kind of thing. I was busking there, they sort of look, walk along, sort of go... <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> yes, it's no good. <laughs> And you might practice a bit and they're not sure whether to stay or not. They're sort of walking along with the shopping bag, sort of going. <laughs> no, I wonder. <laughs> and then you might get really good and practice all summer. They get the crowd of sometimes 13 or 14 people and they have to sort of squeeze through the crowd and get a look at you. Let me throw, I'm a doctor, thank you. <laughs> him, I've seen him twice, he's no good. <laughs> I started off singing, but after a while, as I said, I wanted to learn other things. So I thought, I'll go on a little tour of Europe. I travelled all over Europe, and I wanted to see as many other performers as I could and rip off their ideas, <laughs> which I did. And uh, I went to one place in Covent Garden uh, where they had all these buskers there. Any of you been to Covent Garden? You might have. Yeah. Uh, I saw these fantastic acts there. I saw one magician. He had a magic act whereby he pulled cards seemingly out of thin air. <laughs> like... <laughs> but, you know, and every time a card appeared, the whole audience went, wow. Wow! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow! Quite an amazing wow. act. Wow! I don't know how these guys do this or why they do it, because no one, no one applauds them. <laughs> stupid act because he had to pick up the cards off the floor after. <laughs> I saw another guy, he was a mind reader. Now I have learned how to read people's minds. A quick demonstration. Sir. In a very loud voice, stay there, in a very loud voice, what is your name? Frank. Frank. I knew that. <laughs> Do you know how I knew that, Frank? Yeah. I am psychotic. <laughs> Well, don't mess with me, Frank. <laughs> Frank, in a very loud voice, name any card. Ace of spades. Wrong, it was the diamonds. <laughs> practice, Frank, we need to practice. <laughs> one trick I always wanted to learn how to do, and that was the one where you pull the magic dove out of a handkerchief, like you get a normal handkerchief, and all the audience think it's wonderful because a lovely dove appears and flies away and everybody thinks the magician is really sexy. Thinks. <laughs> and, you know, I've always wanted to learn how to do that one. Dove of peace. <laughs> Finish now. Next bit. I read Harper's and Queen to keep up with my chums and acquaintances. I read Cosmopolitan to find out what the celebrities are doing. I read Woman's Day to see if I recognise anyone off the problem pages. <laughs> keep fit with skiing, tennis and Swedish massage. I keep fit with aerobics, jogging and yoga. I keep fit hauling six bags of groceries and three kids up 13 flights of housing commission stairs. <laughs> we eat Cantonese. We eat Lebanese. We eat Wheaties. <laughs> you're going to be 
seeing on the show every week are called the Empty Pockets. Matthew Parkinson and Matthew Quartermain. They're from Perth, but don't let that bother you. If, uh, if you were wondering why no one's done a shop sketch since Monty Python in the 1960s, I think uh, the Empty Pockets might have the answer. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to get something for my uh, head. Aspirin? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, something that'll stop the sun from burning the top of my head. UV sun lotion? No, no. I was thinking of something a bit more solid. Zinc cream? No, no, no. <laughs> something that'll give me a bit of shade. Beach umbrella? No, no, no. Something that'll go on my head. A hat? No. <sighs> Closer fitting. A cap? No. A bear? No. A beanie? No. A headband? No. A turban? No. A bit of cheese? <laughs> no, no. Right, right, right. No cheese. You want something to go on your head fairly close fitting but still quite comfortable and somehow add to the way you look. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought about a hairpiece? Yes, a hairpiece! It's for a friend. Oh. <clears throat> You're in luck, sir. This is an artificial hair replacement salon. I know. Just put one in a brown paper bag and I'll be off, mate. Well, first we'll have to go through our range and make a selection. That one. Uh, there's the question of size. Regular. And shape. Round. Do we have to make a match with your natural hair colour? Brownies! Look, I've got a very important date tonight. Just dump a mix with half dozen in a bag and bring it back in the morning, eh? I see. So you want a hairpiece to help you attract some young woman under the false pretense that you still have a full head of hair. <laughs> Yes. And what about that crucial moment in the evening when she leans over to whisper in your ear and she can't help noticing the dividing line between reality and fantasy? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, it'll be too late, then she'll be back at my place. I see. And during the course of your passionate lovemaking, she loses control, yeah. she runs her fingers through your hair and comes away with a handful of synthetic fibres. What do you do? Blame the cat. <laughs> she doesn't believe you. She's nobody's fool. She's been around. She calls you a pathetic fake. She storms off. What sort of a girl is she? Yeah, I've got my pride. It's what you like on the inside that counts. Appearances aren't everything. Bitch! <laughs> Who cares if you don't have as much hair as you used to, eh? Yeah, so what if I shed more hair than a sheepdog, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I laugh at your problem. Everybody else will. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, mate. I'm going out with my head held high and my scalp gleaming in the sun. Good on you. Chrome Dome. <laughs> And uh, I can just feel this vibe from people going, go away, go away, go away. But nevertheless, I'm not going to. Did you empathise with that last sketch? Did you just... <laughs> wish you, you meant you wish you dressed and just did that little more carefully, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, I'm here doing a bit of an audience survey because we like to find out who's going to be coming to the big gig and uh, so we can find out what sort of viewers we have. The ABC process these results and then puts on television programs at hours you can't possibly watch them. That's the sort of network we have here. So I've got some multiple choice questions here and if you just give me a few a few answers. Oh, no, I, I had to really, didn't I? I had to come here. By gee, look at this, this is terrific. From the 70s, it just goes to show you, you hang on to something long enough down here, it'll come back into fashion, eh? But it hasn't really, has it? What a shame. But, uh, and so, I, uh, I, is there a nice, you're a couple, you're a couple? Of course, you've got the tie-dye on. I should have asked it straight away. I should have picked it. Now, all right, um, I just want you to sort of answer this tonight. So just say that you, you know, are single or something. If you meet the right person here tonight, you will A, go back to the Hilton Hotel for the evening after a champagne supper. Thinking, bit of thinking, music. Uh, B, go back to the other person's place after a coffee. Tartufo at a cafe bar. <laughs> or C, share a bag of chicken chips and not get any further than the car park. <laughs> any thoughts on that? Oh. 
thanks for sharing that with us. That was beautiful. <laughs> I might uh, move down here. You look like a kind of a liberated kind of guy, yes? Yes. <laughs> in a pretty daggy package, but liberated just the same, good on you. And all right then, i ask you this too. A wet spot to you is... No, please, come on, I'm trying to, this is serious down here. You're thinking hard already, aren't you? Is uh, A, something you are perfectly happy to sleep in? B, Hobart in the summer, C, a moist dog? <laughs> Did you have any thoughts on that? B. B. Hobart in the summer. Yeah, yeah, suck. <laughs> That's weird, wasn't it? Up here. Let's see. Let's see who I can find up here. Oh, it's very pleasant. Now, now, one question I'd like to ask here. If you were a carpenter and you were a lady, would you marry... Oh, who wrote this stupid question? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Now, now, I want, I want it. Now, who did you? I think we might actually get off six. But don't you think that'd be a good idea? Yeah, I think so. Do you think? <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I feel like my mum's here going, Wendy, just tone it down if you would just like just that little bit. Thank you. Would you like to send a cheerio <laughs> to carry on the stage? <laughs> good. Uh, no, that was lovely. I oh, see. Is Kerry Simpson in the band? Are you her mum? Yes. Oh, oh, isn't that lovely? Good on you. <laughs> Must just be that little disappointing for you, though, really, in some ways, isn't it? Not really. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just being silly. Did you see uh, Bob Hawke on Yana's show last night, on Yana event? The one thing he's trying to do, Bob Hawke, is the election's coming up, he's decided to appeal to the women voters. Did you see that? Sucking up to yarn at like you wouldn't believe, going, hey baby, check the eyebrows. <laughs> All I could think of was a flasher looking through a hedge myself. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> nasty piece of work, that one. But, but, um, Bob, Bob has decided that he should clean, clean up parliamentarians' language because the women don't like the strong language. So I just thought I might ask you here, which is your favourite Paul Keating quote? A, you bunch of pansies, you're nobody's going nowhere. <laughs> B, I'll crucify you, you moron. <laughs> C, eat hot maggots, you filthy scumbags. <laughs> For a D, I think I would make an excellent Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, just a final question here. Like, Bob Hawke, as I say, he does want to track the women's votes down. He want to... How are you going? Thanks. Good on you. You should probably think, thinking, God, it's a good band, isn't it, nurse? <laughs> good to have you in. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I hadn't done that. Um... <laughs> Now, if Bob Hawke wants to attract the women's vote... No, I'll come right down here in the uh, floor. If Bob Hawke wants to attract the women's vote, he should, A, take the luxury tax off tampons. Girls, yes? Yeah! yeah. B, put a luxury tax on Grecian 2000. Yeah. Or C, step aside and give Hazel the job. Yeah? yeah. Yes. That's the way to go. All right, that's the audience survey, and uh, I'll watch this bit, I think. Are you in short unemployable? Why not try tertiary education? Now there's a new convenience learning facility that's open 24 hours a day with plenty of parking. Lager University. We'll have you in the front door and up on stage to collect your degree from a famous name academic in a silly hat quicker than you can say Bachelor of Applied Science. You can join the fully qualified overpaid profession of your choice. Not in four years, not in three years, but in one holiday weekend. That's right, our luxury limp is on standby to pick you up from anywhere in South East Asia on Friday and drop you back on Monday and time to open your own firm and start screening clients. <laughs> What's your fancy? We can offer you courses uniquely designed to prepare you for the challenging realities of the marketplace. There's the Laurie Connell School of Business Management. The Jeffrey Edison School of Medicine. Or the Susan Renew School of Home Economics. History. <laughs> Why not the history of the America's Cup 1984 to 1984? Politics. We'll show you where to pick up the new state government for a fair price and when to trade it in. And facilities? <laughs> State of the art. Why not pop into the Eileen Bond Tavern, designed and decorated by the great lady herself? If you've got a yen for knowledge, call us now. Lager University for the 2.2 .2 IQ.
further news update. Early reports on the latest crash of a fully laden 737 blamed the disaster on the apparent cross-wiring of the fuel injection system to the aircraft's overhead projector. <laughs> it seems we owe the survivors an apology, said a spokesman. When the credits rolled over the end of young Einstein and the projector switched off, the plane just fell out of the sky like a brick with in-flight catering. The problem is quality control. We haven't got any. And don't forget, coming up on your ABC straight after this program, something different, a comedy. And tonight's hilarious episode of our British series, Whoops, I'm Sitting on the Crumpets, Penelope and Jeremy find themselves in a muddle over the bathroom renovations. That'll be one to watch. Then at 9 o'clock, Monday Conference is hosted this week by special guest Susan Renouf, who will be giving her views on the housing crisis. At two minutes past nine, the second part of our mini-series, Deceit. Stephanie embarks on a passionate affair with Carlo, a former boyfriend of her twin. Sabrina, meanwhile, is finding it difficult to fend off the unwelcome attentions of Giorgio. Well, what can you expect if you insist on dressing like a tart? Well, it's time to get back to the program. Not long to go now. When I first started out in show business, they gave me one piece of advice. Never work with children or animals. Unfortunately, our next act contains both. But we love them anyway, the world famous Doug Anthony All-Stars! <laughs> time ago the three of us were sitting around in a pub in Belfast in the Republic of Ireland and we were all discussing a terrible war that's been raging in Ireland for so long now and it's a war basically between two religious factions the Hare Krishnas and the Muslims. <laughs> now so far the Irish Hare Krishnas have been trying to beat the Shiite out of the Muslims. <laughs> who have been trying to beat the Shiite out of Salman Rushdie who by the way is at our place right now that's 22 Park Street St Kilda. <laughs> He's all alone, he's off his face on acid and thinks he's surrounded by bodyguards, so he's open game. We were picked up and got dragged off by a very rare and a very dangerous Irish Hare Krishna hill tribe. They stripped us naked and they taught us the path of love, compassion and chastity. I mean, why can't we be like the Americans? Stupid, but happy. Hare! Hare! Set them up, drink them down, pass the cup around. It's the lust we will share for quite some time. I've shaved my head, wear a dress. I've left my bonny wife. Hey, I've got Krishna riding shotgun on the stagecoach of my life. My sweet Lord Rama Rama got my ticket to Nirvana. It's a commune just left of County Court. Share a pint with me, Lord Shiva, as we read the Bhagavad Gita. I'll have Krishna riding shotgun on the stagecoach of my life. Hey, of my life. A cattle prod for Jesus And L. Ron Hubbard took me in some too I was a moony love Charles Manson But they are not as handsome the baby. As the Godhead whose skin is shining blue My sweet Lord Rama Rama Got my ticket to Nirvana It's a commune just left of County Cork Share a pint with me, Lord Shiva As we read the Bhagavad Gita I'm Krishna, riding shotgun on the stagecoach of my life, hey, of my life. Hurry, hurry, ha, hooray! I chanted every day with my virtue tucked proudly in my lap. <laughs> and I pray all night to Krishna. Bom, 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 bom. Wanna buy a free book, mate? Because he's a damn good listener. How about a free haircut? <laughs> Never ever ever answers back. My sweet Lord Rama Rama got my ticket to Nirvana. It's a commune just left of County Cork. Share a pint with me, Lord Shiva, as we read the Bhagavad Gita. Richard, just stop up the blood. 
Total lesson, Ferguson. <laughs> and when my eyes are trying to make the pony pay, we'll get Krishna and his shotgun to join the IRA. The IRA. The IRA. Ha, ha, hooray! For the All Stars, we would like to introduce ourselves. Starting with on the left there, Tim, but you can call him Elvis Kafka. Since my cockroach left me, uh, uh huh. <laughs> and in the middle, cockroachitous, perspicacious Paul, but you can call him Trotsky the Baptist. People in the front row will understand what Trotsky the Baptist did about very shortly. <laughs> and for you older people, notice some you old people at home tonight with you at some point. I hope to be discussing Cartesian logic. And the songs of Neil Diamond. Now, I'll just give you a quick snippet of what you can expect. Cartesian logic. The songs of Neil Diamond. I am, I said, hey. I think I am. Therefore I said, I think, therefore I am. Thanks so much. <laughs> and, and, and I'm Richard. But the guys in the group have given me the name of... Warren. Rabbit's up his... <laughs> Warren Peace. <gasps> oh, come on, Australia. You know, the three of us come from Canberra, and Canberra is very much the home of the new Parliament House building. Anybody here in the new Parliament House building? Well, for those who don't, the new Parliament House building is basically the kind of building where the architect says something like, oh, just put it over there, thanks. <laughs> That'll be fine. We always stay with my parents whenever we go to Canberra, mainly because it's cheap. There's an old saying, money isn't everything, but it tends to keep the kids in touch, and I think there's an element of truth in that. <laughs> whenever I'm in trouble with my mum, I've noticed she always uses my full name. She says, Timothy! Timothy Dawson Langbean Ferguson! <laughs> Don't you laugh, you haven't got Langbean as a middle name. <laughs> whenever I'm in trouble with my father, my father always says things like, um, ay, 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 really mad he just says things like hey <laughs> now the other day we were just minding our own business playing around with this now world famous rubber glove the mother comes in and says timothy timothy there'll be no more rebirthing in this family <laughs> my father came in and went hey, 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 blah 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 they were in a bad mood because the dog had just thrashed them at scrabble <laughs> but here are some of the things we were doing you crazy youngish kids at home <gasps> tim's impersonation now of a well-known popular farmyard animal it is of course <laughs> Come on, it's surreal. Goes out to Solidor, darling. Let's go for it. It's a cow. Oh, well, Mr. Russell Hins, waving goodbye. <laughs> Just leave the money on the table, thanks. George Bush's final moment. Uh-oh. Woo! <laughs> and now it's for impersonations all the way from Finland. Tim's impersonation now of a popular Hollywood film star from the 1940s. Esther Williams! <laughs> a Bondi lifesaver! Mercury, the god of speed. <laughs> An Irish Hare Krishna. <laughs> An Irish Hare Krishna, member of the IRA. <gasps> Get out of Ireland and a sacred cow catcher. <laughs> and now, something we did in Tokyo that went down very well, mainly, I suspect, because of its visual qualities, the human lung. Ladies and gentlemen, big in all the medical schools in the Soviet bloc, the human lung. If he's under there for longer than five hours, he dies. Whoa! Very quick impersonation of a squid. <laughs> I'm OK! <laughs> now, now listen, you kids, don't do that at home unless you have a full can of petrol and some matches. <laughs> Now, um, settle down, everyone. I don't know how many of you people here tonight would know it, but I was actually born in Tangawara. 
<laughs> well, get stuffed, a lot of you. Now, go and learn something else about the world. I used to live there, top of New South Wales, with my mum and dad. And we used to raise cantaloupes. About two or three thousand when they're in season. And they're pretty frisky little buggers when they get away from you. I remember my father and I didn't see eye to eye after I was about uh, seven. That's mainly because he was a midget. And we used to have a cousin that visited us a, a fair bit. But I couldn't stand that kid. I hated him was mainly because he was a malignant tumour. Well, that's what they mean when they say a cousin twice removed, because he was removed once from the dog's malfunctioning prostate, <laughs> but he came up as this sort of annoying lump in my mother's throat. In that way, it was sort of similar to Dad, because Dad often came up as an annoying lump in my mother's throat. Anyway, regardless of that rather sordid detail of my past, I did learn a wonderful skill in Tangawara. It's a skill I couldn't have learned here in Melbourne. It's a skill I learned all by myself. At the age of 15, I won a contest in Tangawara and became the world's greatest And it's a skill I would love to share with some of the younger people in here tonight. I'm wet and I'm moist, so come on, let's rejoice in the birds, the bees, the fillies, and the colds. And the fact that we are all young adults. Hi, baby. And lie back on your couch. After this, there'll be no doubt. I don't care if you're a miss or a missus. You done been squelched by the world's best kisses. Ho, oh, oh, ho, and pow. I'll suck your face until I pull your wisdoms out. I've done so grand, you call me more than friend. For one kiss from this, you'll never brush your teeth again. And you know it's true. Well, go back to your husband now. Tell him you done broke your vow. Stand proud and say, hey, mister. Uh. That was bloody impressive. <laughs> I've just been kissed by the world's best mister. Ho, ho, sit up straight and pow. I'll suck your face until I pull your molars out. A tongue so long, it really grows and grows. Put it in your mouth and it'll clean out your nose. <laughs> Don't give me any lip. I've only kissed one girl before. My grandma on the kitchen floor. She dribbled and grinned and said, Hey, kid, you taught me things your grandpa never did. <laughs> she added, there'd be hell to pay. If Ma found out we'd gone astray So hurry, Paul, go and get some sleep You've finally got a skill to teach the sheep <laughs> Hey, hey, come down and pucker up These lips are strong enough to stop a drug A tongue so long, it really packs a punch Oh, one kiss from this and I'll know what you had for lunch <laughs> Kiss from this and I'll know what you had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> and don't forget, people, you fly a little bit closer to heaven when you fly in a jumbo 747. Thank you. Calculator. What have you got that for? I might need it. Oh, why has it got a mirror in it? Nah, it's handy to work things out on. Look, Marina, put her away. Puts boys off. Why? Because, you know, they might think you you know, they might think you're good at maths. Oh, yeah, good thinking. <laughs> hey, listen, Cherie, I was just thinking about AIDS, right? Hey, funny you should mention that. You know, I was just thinking about that the other day. I reckon it must be about a year since Bob Geldof got all those really in important top music people and Molly Meldrum mm. and they all did AIDS together to feed the world. That was my favourite one. Mm. Oh, we were at the back of Rasheen's place having a barbecue and we were crying. It was really fab. It was so trash. Mm. Well, it was a very emotional night. It was Rasheen's 28th birthday. Mm. I reckon she looks older than that, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it was very nice, though. I mean, it was catered for. Mm. Gourmet sausages, fairy lights in the tree, big punch in a garbage bin. Gorgeous. Yeah, I need a piss down all night. And we couldn't go in the carport because her boyfriend was playing ping pong. Mm. She dropped him after that. She yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we were in the lounge room and we were watching Feed the World and we were crying. Mm. And we pledged $28. Because it was Rasheen's 28th, 28th birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah. 
And, you know, it made us feel really, really good to do something like that. Yeah, well, you know, Cherie, it's really important to give things to people who need them. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. And Only we got really pissed, you know, and I don't know whether anyone's seen it. Oh, oh never mind, it's a thought that counts. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, though, it wasn't that kind of AIDS. I was thinking about sexual AIDS. Oh, yeah, you mean lingerie? No. Oh, no. no, I mean AIDS you get from having sex. Yeah. You know, bowling alleys. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, onto it, onto it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with you, with you, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I was thinking about AIDS, right? Uh -huh. And hey, I... Miranda, you don't want to think about AIDS. No, it just makes it really hard to crack on the guys. No, all you want to do is have safe sex. Oh, yeah, of course. I had safe sex last weekend. Did you? Yeah. What'd you do? Oh, I just made sure we drank light beer all night. <laughs> no, that's for when you're in the car. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's for when you're driving. Yeah, we were. <laughs> Anyway, you know, I was talking to Melissa, all right? You know, she's the one with the really bad skin who's going out with the gorgeous, gorgeous guy. She works in an insurance office and she reckons now they test you for AIDS, right? Uh. They ask you about your sexual partners and their sexual partners and their sexual partners for the last eight years. God! How would you remember? I don't know. Well, anyway, look, that just say, right, mm. I have had four sexual partners in the four. last eight years. Four? All right, Cherie, it is a hypothetical and relatively conservative estimate, OK? And bullshit. Shut your face. Anyway, just say, in the last eight years, I've had four partners, and they've had four partners, and they've had four partners. I've worked out, I've slept with 28,592 people. But you had a full-time job last year. No, in viral terms, I'm what's known as a passive nymphomaniac. Now, listen, Miranda, I never called you that. No, Nadine said you were an info once, and I said she'd better bloody not call you that in case you found out. Oh, thanks, Cherie. But just say they tested me right and I did have AIDS. Think of how many letters I'd have to write. I don't even know where half of them have been, let alone where they live. <laughs> hey, Miranda, can I borrow the calculator? Yeah. Now, what is it? So there's 365 days in a year. Yeah, 60 minutes in an hour. Yeah. Do I need a square root? You count them, so not worth it. Oh. Where's plus? <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank. I am your movement teacher. Some of you will find this difficult to believe, but four years ago, my body was very uptight. I couldn't relax. I couldn't take it easy. <laughs> then I went to India. There I met a very short, wise man. He called himself the little fakir Swami Mohammed Abdullah bin Richard III and I study body movement with him <laughs> in his ashram in Thailand. Since returning to the West, I have developed my own body awareness program, which I have called Body Awareness Program. <laughs> As I look around this place now, I can see that many of you need to learn three basic things. How to stand correctly, how to sit correctly, and how to relax. <laughs> ah. But first, I would like you all to join me in some simple movement exercises. Would you all please make two fists with your hands and place them in front of your body? All please do this now. Everybody, good. Now I'd like you to raise the index finger that's Mr. Tall. <laughs> of your left hand, raise it up and move it around. Notice how this feels. Good. Lower the finger. Now I want you to all drop your shoulders, raise your sternum, and put your body in correct posture. Good. Now you're in correct posture. I want you to try the same thing with the finger on the right hand. That's the other hand. Move that index finger around and around. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> this is because your body is in correct posture. Okay, lower the finger, give both hands a good shake. 
Now let's quickly look at correct ways to sit and walk. To walk correctly, you must first make sure both feet are firmly on the ground. Make sure your back is up straight, leaning properly against the chair. Good. Now to stand, you simply thrust your pelvis forward, put your weight on your legs, and you're standing. Okay, now let's walk. Make sure everything is in alignment. Your head, your chest, your pelvis, and your balls of your feet. <laughs> and you simply transfer your weight from one leg to the other. Notice how easily I am walking. Notice how economically I am walking. How smooth this movement is. Just keep on walking. <laughs> Keep walking till you want to stop. Now might be a good time. <laughs> good. You have all learned how to walk, how to use your middle finger, and how to sit around. You're all now ready for a job with the public service. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. My name is Frank. I want to thank you all for being. Remember, tomorrow is the first day before the day after that. <laughs> Nigel, Joan. there are a few things I'd like to say about our skiing weekend. Joan, darling, there's no need to thank me. It was just a mad romantic idea of mine to spirit you away to the mountains for a few precious days alone with me. Well, why couldn't we stay home and watch The Sound of Music? Oh, the fresh alpine breeze on one's face. That clean, high country air, it did your world of good, Joan, darling. I was blinded by a flurry of snow and smashed into a hoon on a snowmobile. Yes, all those young people zooming about, madly enjoying themselves. I broke my collarbone in three places. You were like a young gazelle taking its first weary step. <laughs> in my brain. You are so brave. Not a whimper. I was unconscious. But you soldiered on. I dragged myself back to the chalet with my one good arm. I found you in bed trembling like a frightened kitten. I have frostbite. And I'll never forget those tender moments when I comforted you in your distress. You gave me a Dairy Queen with nuts on top and you know I don't like nuts. And you went outside seeing. How I combed the area for a qualified physician. Oh yes. Wasn't I lucky that after six hours in the bar, you realized you were in the middle of a medical convention? Such a caring group of men. A mob of drunken medicos burst into my chalet at midnight and started feeling me up. All so keen to help. <laughs> they poured a bottle of vodka down my throat and shared the painkillers amongst themselves. <laughs> when I came to in the morning, I had one leg in plaster and they're preparing me for an appendectomy. I had to beat them over the head with the empty vodka bottle. Now I've got a steel pin in my shoulder, I can't use my right hand, and I've got a shaved belly. <laughs> I may be disfigured for life. All right, Joan, darling, you're not a snow person. I won't take you up there again. How about this weekend we just go hang gliding? Oh, oh marvellous! I'll just go and toss myself off a cliff right away, shall I? Well, don't be silly, darling, you might get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> last night on the Riviera with my lover. I spent last weekend in Sydney with a married man. I spent yesterday afternoon in bed with Ray Martin, the kids, the cat and a headache. <laughs> my husband is a busy man, but I'm perfectly satisfied with sexual intercourse once a month. Kevin spends a lot of time with his mates, so we have sex about once a week. My old man can't keep his hands off me. <laughs> My husband does have a 17 metre yacht. Yeah, my husband has a 15 foot windsurfer. <laughs> Good evening. 
Rescuers sifting through the rubble of Geelong, which was wholly demolished in a horrifying fireball caused by plummeting 737s, have found few clues to the disaster except a teach yourself to fly manual and a bale of fencing wire. The manual is self-explanatory, said a perspiring spokesman. We weren't going to send Alan up there unqualified. The fencing wire was to be used to secure the luggage hatches in the event of an emergency. The pilot's last recorded words were, I think the door's fallen off, I'll just throw up the window and have a look. We don't know what went wrong. Listen, are you aware that the ABC operates within the guidelines of the Australian Tribunal Act of 1985? Now, this act very generously provides a mechanism for viewers' complaints. If you have any misgivings, no matter how trivial, about this program you have been watching, please ring 008-524-8888. That's a toll-free number. If the lines are busy, you can ring me at home later on 524-2401 at my mother's place. Or then again, I could pop round and pick something up. No trouble at all. Even mental telepathy can work. I'm sure that if we all think as one, if we go to our windows and lean out, not too far if you're living up high, and shout, I'm really, really cross and I'm not going to take it anymore, then we'll all feel much better about ourselves. I know I will. Uh, this is, I was talking about busking before, this is the first song I ever learned busking. If you know it, join in, will you? <laughs> there is a house. Join in, in New York. Not too fast, it's a bar chord. <laughs> Holy, it's great, is it? Yeah, okay, right. A song that has never been sung before. Have you ever thought, I wish someone would sing something about something different? I want you to think, what would you like me to sing a song about? You call it out, we're going to write it down in a bit of paper here, and whatever is called out will go down the paper and I'll sing about it. Now, it can be anything at all. Like, for example, Queensland. Well done, that young fellow there. Catching Hang on a second. Queensland, someone over here? Catching a tram. Catching a tram. <laughs> <laughs> what did that person say? Heroin. Belly buttons, leech. Lint. Belly button Lint. leeches. <laughs> lint. Ah, belly button lint. Okay, jolly good, very good. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe, all right. Dogs. Give me. Oh, you had one. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> how about uh, a, a place? Give me a place, a room in the in the house somewhere. This lady Thank here. You. Toilet. The toilet. <laughs> jolly good. Give me an emotion. I need an emotion. Fear. What? Death. Life. Death. Life. Death. Life. Death, and as, as an emotion. How are you feeling today, dear? Oh, I'm feeling a little bit death. <laughs> Oh, you romantic buggy. <laughs> All right, death as an emotion. Hangover. Hangover. A hangover. Hangover and death. Hangover <laughs> and death. So we have a song about all this. What kind of songs is it going to be? Is it going to be a blues, yeah. reggae, rock and roll, jazz? What? Yeah. Reggae, yeah. rock and... Anything yeah. else? Any other, yeah. other like Country and Western? Yeah. Let's, have a vote. Let's hear it for, for reggae. Yeah. Let's hear it for country and western. Yeah. Let's hear it for blues. Yeah. All right, it's quite clear. Country and western it is. Here we go. <laughs> No, we'll make it a reggae one, sort of reggae, country and western bluesy one. About Queensland, catching the tram, belly button fluff, toilets, Marilyn Monroe, hangovers and death. <laughs> Jolly good, so here we go. Here, mine. I caught a tram to Queensland. <laughs> it was going very fast. They didn't have a toilet, and I had a hangover. I was feeling like death. La, la, la. <laughs> Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe is dead. <laughs> your heart out. Thanks, Glenn. We're just about to uh, finish the show. I, I would just like to say before we go, uh, I know a lot of you people have been sitting out there at home and in the studio tonight and looking at me thinking, gee whiz, don't I know that face from Australian film? 
thanks for the support, studio audience. That was great. No, I have had a fantastic career in Australian films, actually. I was a, a, a nurse in the Anzacs. I was a matron in Gallipoli. I uh, brought round the oranges in Body Line, and I was a barmaid in Crocodile Dundee. And people say there aren't roles for women in Australian films. <laughs> it's absurd, really, isn't it? a new movie coming up actually I have got a new movie coming up I've got the script right here with me I'm actually doing a, a movie with Brian Brown um, a lot of people say you know Brian Brown is wooden but uh, gee um, the only thing is he can't do westerns because people keep tying their horses up to him you know but anyway. <laughs> you're a big spunk Brian if you're watching um, no, this is a script I'm going to be doing with Brian Brown. I thought I might just run it past you, seeing we're all here. Right. Now, this is Brian's line. All right, men, we're going to win this one for Queen and Country. There's a million miles of desert out there. Let's go for it. This is my line. Can I get you a cup of tea, sir? <laughs> and then I thought, come on, when? why not make her a bit stronger? You know, a bit more of a character part. You know, put some guts into it. And I thought I might say, um, look, we've got tea or this coffee if you'd rather. <laughs> And then I thought, now come on, bugger it, go all out, make her a, a really strong, tough, feminist, modern woman who really knows her own mind. Look, you're getting coffee, like it or lump it. <laughs> so I'll work on it anyway. <laughs> Thanks very much. Do you feel another song coming on? Yeah? yeah. Okay, take it away, swinging sidewalks. Thank <laughs> you. 
Saturday morning at 9, Radio Vision, simulcast in stereo with Sydney's JJJFM, returns to Montreux for hot live performances by Public Enemy, Run DMC, Maxi Priest and Sting. Radio Vision's at the Montreux Rock Festival throughout the nation on ABC TV and simulcast...